Austin Fit Magazine, and we're here at the Whole Foods Market Culinary Center. With me is Dan Merrick, and he's a healthy eating specialist and also a chef here. And he's going to show us today how to use local pumpkins for the muffins that we're going to be making. I'm going to use canned pumpkin for the recipe because it's, it's easy and fast, but another option is to use a whole pumpkin. Yeah, actually, it's a really, um, really simple thing to do. You can actually just get the pumpkin that you would actually typically use if you're carving a pumpkin at home and really just start with that. Uh, so this is just a traditional uh, carver's pumpkin. It's okay. actually um, out of Texas as well, so it's a local pumpkin. Um, now, what we're going to do with this is just take the top off, just like you would normally if you were going to, you know, make like a jack-o'-lantern or something with your kids. You basically just want to cut the top off and be able to get the seeds out from the inside. So all I'm doing right now is just making some cuts into the top of it to be able to pull the top right out of there. So I've always heard you have to use a pie pumpkin, so that's not true. No, um, there are all kinds of varieties of pumpkins mm -hmm. actually, and you will get different flavors out of them. In okay. fact, we've been getting some heirloom pumpkins lately mm -hmm. that are ridiculously good. Yeah. So just to get the seeds out from the inside, just the same way you would if you were making a jack-o'-lantern. Just take a spoon just like this. A bigger spoon is always good too. And just scrape the inside out so you get all of that fibrous material and the seeds. And don't forget to save the seeds and bake them off and for great them. snacks. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to scrape the inside of that out there. So how much of this pumpkin would it take to be the equivalent of about one cup? of hand pumpkin, because that's what we're using in the recipe today. This is going to make a lot of uh, material for pumpkin. Okay. Um, so if you were comparing this to just a can of pumpkin, you'd probably end up with about a dozen cans just okay. from one pumpkin alone. Now, You're going to be making a lot of muffins. <laughs> exactly. So you can do all kinds of other things with them, like making pumpkin butters and all kinds of great recipes for the holidays. Okay. Um, you know, another great thing you want to do with these is once we actually cut this down too, um, you actually do want to cook the pumpkin as well. You can actually cook or you can actually eat pumpkin on its own, just raw, but um, for this recipe, it's required to cook it. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to cut this in half now. So once I get the seeds out from the inside, you basically just want to cut the pumpkin in half, just like this. And you end up with two sides of your pumpkin. I'm going to actually pull out the insides of these now. So again, just scraping the inside to get all the fibrous material out from the inside. save those seeds on the side for baking mm -hmm. later. And that'll do it. So what you want to end up with is a clean pumpkin looking just like this. So after you have your pumpkin in half and you have it cleaned out, you want to cut it into small usable sized pieces so we can peel it. If you peel it just like this, that'll work just fine. It's just a little easier if you break down the pumpkin a little bit so you can get the peeler around it much easier. So I'll show you at this one slice. So I'm taking the pumpkin on the outside and just taking my peeler on the outside. And what you want to do is just get rid of all the orange. You shouldn't have any stripes left over at all. And make sure you get in the ridges really well as well. So as I'm going along with this, after you actually peel the entire thing, you can put it into a food processor. Mm -hmm. You can just cube it up and steam it if you want to as well. Okay. If you put it in the food processor, you can either do it um, you know, where it will completely break it down, or you can use one of the fancy settings to shred it as well. But for this recipe, you, you would cook it, either steam it or roast it. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And then so, it. And all we're going to do is take these pieces and just make sure, you know, as always, cut everything in equal size pieces so mm -hmm. it cooks at the same rate. Okay. So if we're cooking this pumpkin, we just want to make sure to cut it all in equal sizes. And what temperature, if you were roasting it, would you suggest people roast that at? Usually about 350 degrees for about 20 minutes of dew. Um, steaming is another great thing to be able to do as well. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use any oil. You could also roast it without the oil. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to steam it, I would just cut it up into small pieces like this. And then put it right into a pot with a steamer basket. And then you actually have great, fresh, lo local pumpkin for your pumpkin muffins. Well, thanks, Dan. Dan will be here with us next month to show us another culinary tip, so be sure to tune back in to see that. So now we're going to make the streusel topping for our fall pumpkin muffins. 
And one of the really nice things about this recipe is if you have little kids, it's a great way to get them in the kitchen and get them baking with you. And it's so easy and fast that you can make batches of these muffins and give them out during the holidays. So to make the streusel topping, we're going to add whole oats, some brown sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, and some whole wheat pastry flour. The, um, the streusel topping gives a lot of texture and flavor to the muffins, and you don't have to add make the streusel topping if you don't want to, but I think it adds a nice flavor. We're going to add a little bit of butter, and we're just going to mix this till it all comes together, and it should look something like this when you're done, just all mixed together really well. So we're going to set that aside, and we're going to make um, the muffins now. So we're going to mix the dry ingredients together. We're going to add some whole wheat pastry flour, and I like to use whole wheat pastry flour when I'm baking. It produces a really tender product, and it has some fiber in it too, which is really nice. We're going to add some brown sugar, a little baking powder, just a tiny bit of salt, some cinnamon, some cloves, nutmeg, and allspice. And these dry spices give the muffins just a little bit more flavor. And we're going to mix this together. Okay, we've set aside the dry ingredients and we're going to mix together the liquid ingredients. So I'm going to add the eggs, the canola oil, and then we're using canned pumpkin for this recipe. And pumpkin is a, is a winter squash and it's really high in alpha and beta carotene. And those act as antioxidants and are converted to vitamin A in our bodies. And we've all heard that vitamin A is good for our eye health, and that's true. It really does help maintain our eyes. So we're going to mix this together. You can use a whisk, too, if you do this. And then we're going to take our dry ingredients. And we're going to pour the liquid ingredients in there. Kids will really like doing this part. And we're going to just mix this together until it's combined. You don't want to overmix this because we want our muffins to be really tender. You can already smell the spices in the pumpkin it's starting to smell really good as it's coming together. Okay, then we are going to use just a regular muffin tin, and I've got these lined with some liners. We're going to add a little bit to each muffin liner. And this recipe makes enough for 12 muffins. We're going to put these in the oven and we're going to bake them at 350 for about 20, somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes. Well, I think the muffins are ready. I wish you could smell them because they smell delicious. They baked up great. And now you can share them with everyone. So join us next month for another fit, fast, and family-friendly recipe.